wonder how they picked that voice. <laughs> Recording in progress. <laughs> okay, who wants to go for it? Le so let's do three minute turns because we have we have a short amount of time. Yeah, uh, I don't think Jana's here. I think she's got a client at the okay. moment. Well, and, and did, did they say what time we're coming back? Like 10 minutes till? 20 minutes, I think they said this breakout room was for 20 which minutes. Which would give us, which would give us 10 minutes. No, which would give 10 minutes in the final room. So, okay. So let's, let's try three minute turns, see how that feels. Okay. Who wants to go first? I can go. Okay. Are you keeping time, Lou, or should I? Okay. No, I'll keep time. Okay, thank you. Um, would you be my listener, please? Me? Lou? Lou? Sure. Yeah. Sure, yeah, go. Okay. Um, I'm still confused. Um, I'm, I'm struggling as, you know, my scholarly brain is trying to draw the definition between self-empathy and mindfulness, which is a lot of what I do in therapy. Um, so awareness, mindfulness, self-empathy, um, I'm not quite sure. Um, and since the only, at this point, the only framework that makes sense is my, maybe IFS in terms of self-empathy and I'm not on the IFS. Oh, there's Jana, okay. Th does that change our turns? No. No, okay. I, I'm, I'm just, uh, I just have thoughts along those lines. Um, yes, I, so I, let me just do that part. So you're feeling yes. a bit confused, um, you, um most of what you're hearing uh about how she's defining empathy is fits within the within the ifs framework the family systems framework and that's not really your the way you look at it and so you're not really quite sure what what to do which i'm still very comfortable participating is just where i am um otherwise I, I took some notes i really like the diagrams she had um i i guess i like these visuals um, I'm not sure whether the blocks of self-empathy are not a detail that's too much because we don't really spend a lot of time there. Um, just overall simplifying the slide, simplifying especially the definition, but we talked about that. Um, yeah, and putting the sources there. She mentions them, but they're not on the slides. Who are the authors of some of the, some of the ideas? Yes, you'd like to see the sources on the slides. You like the visuals that she's created. Um, and what else did you say? There's an, oh, you made another point. I missed it. I dropped it was it. about simplifying. It was oh. your point with simplifying, simplifying the definition, simplifying the overall message. Okay. Yeah, and you think, you think simplifying is important. But it's so enjoyable to listen to uh, so many um, caring minds trying to share and find some, arrive at something that will be beneficial and truthful and good. So I've, I've enjoyed the process. Yeah, so you're really enjoying the conversation, both the quality of it and the heartfulness of it. And, oh. and you know, trying to work together to come to some understanding. Beautiful, I feel fully heard, thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'll go to Wendy. That's right with you, Wendy. Yes, certainly. Um, yeah. Yeah, I also am really enjoying the discussion. It's it's um it's both intellectually stimulating and heart nourishing to participate and to hear the different perspectives. Um, uh, and I also, I mean, I express in the other room, just worry about, you know, how much, how much will be useful, uh, how, how much information will we give to people? Um, and will it be useful instead of overwhelming? I'll stop there. Um, you shared that you're really enjoying this whole process, the discussion, the quality of it, and um, the sharing and the heartfeltness of it all. And you expressed a, a concern about how, how this will all be used. Yeah, and the, and the last exercise we did, I had one more comment I wanted to make, which was that 
in terms of how you would use self-empathy in an empathy circle, which is, you know, we talked about grounding it with that. So the, the writing actually that we did is a good uh, model or uh, idea of how tracking your internal dialogue, which is what you do in an empathy circle. So the other things I mentioned, like gesture and talking and uh, th none of those, those help develop self-understanding, but you wouldn't use any of them in an empathy circle. You, you, you don't have time to do that if you're the listener. Uh, but you can track your internal dialogue and the writing is good, good practice at doing that. So you wanted to make another comment on the last uh, journaling exercise um, that Priyanka asked us to do. And you realize that actually the exercise she was offering was about self-empathy in the empathy circle and how that um, you can track your uh, the judgments, et cetera, when you're journaling, but the other methods that you shared, the gesture, et cetera, you, you wouldn't have time to do that in an empathy circle. So in that sense, the journaling uh, was very appropriate. Yeah, and I also think hearing you mention what she asked us to do, which is to read the thing back over and look for where we there, were, there was judgment. I actually think it's important to have a step if you're gonna have people do that to take the judgments and translate them into some, into something else, like translate them into feelings and needs so that people, they don't just read it and see the judgments and think, oh, you know, I, I judge myself. Oh, look, I'm not doing it right, but actually help them to, to um, begin to think another way rather than thinking in the judgmental way, translate it as a way of beginning to practice thinking differently. So you, um, are reminded of the actual um, basis of the exercise, which was to to help us notice our self judgments um, when we when we're writing, but specifically when we're in the empathy circle, and um, you feel that it's important to add another step and to verbalize that step, that idea of what what do those self judgments then show us um, what needs um, are, are not being fulfilled and what feelings do they represent so you would want to add that um, to the instructions right yes okay thank you i feel heard thank you lou and um, jana i don't know if you're there or not now if you want to be my listener um Otherwise, um, uh, yeah, uh, Violetta, are you happy to do that? Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think she's, you know, Priyanka has done so well. You know, she she's created something that wasn't there and that's always, a, you know, a joy to see that level of creation and the research she's done. Um, yeah, let's stop there. Priyanka has done so much uh, research and just creating. She, she created um, something that wasn't there before. And it's yeah. always a beautiful thing to see. Thank you. Um, I have concerns at the wordiness of it. And this is part of the process. You know, it's just um, a great <clears throat> believer in, in presenting less, but going deeper. You know, do less, but do it better. So you're you're passionate about doing less with fewer words, but going deeper. Mm -hmm. um, so you probably what I hear is that you're thinking it, her presentation would benefit or the whole session would benefit from simplifying wording and going deeper. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and in particular, the definition of what is self, um, you know, it's it's huge. <laughs> what is self? And it just yeah what was up on the screen to me that wasn't a definition of, of self you know <clears throat> I think it said something like everybody has has it you know that's like saying an elephant is an elephant not defining the elephant but yeah so it, it especially have some concerns about the definition of self um on that slide there was no real definition um I was mentioning everybody has a self yeah um, having said that, you know, <laughs> it is huge. It is such a huge topic. What is self? But for sure, 
if we are going to be defining self-empathy, we can't just define empathy, we have to define self. So I would like to see a bit more um, um, participant interaction, you know, in the course. Well, what do you, for, for participants to actually be asked to consider, well, what do you think of when you think of self? In the same way, at the beginning, we started with what do we think is self-empathy, but yeah. So in, in this process of developing this course, we're trying to, in a simple and persuasive way, um, invite people to define empathy and its facets. Uh, but when we talk about self-empathy, uh, we struggle with a similar question of how can we do something so difficult with fewer words and do it well, um, and specifically self. And we talk about self-empathy, we can't fully escape um, the de defining this, what is self um, and not just what is empathy. Um, well, fully you heard, say, thank you. Wanna you. One, you wanna say one more thing, Wendy? Um, no, it's fine. I'll, the one thing leads to another, but thank you. I feel fully heard. Okay. Jenna, are you there for uh, to be my listener? Are you available? Yeah, yeah, I'm actually. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, since I'm about to prepare the, our next session, I'm deeply in thoughts about um, how do we um, deal with these very complicated topics in a way that's accessible and open source and consensual um, and still truthful. So since we're about to, you're about to present the next topic, you're concerned about how to, this, is, this presentation is having a reflect on how to make the difficult topics um, uh, um, comprehensible and easy to understand. Is, is there something else? We had a lot of adjectives there. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty close. Um, cool. With, with imaginative empathy, which is what I'm about to do, I think the choice will be to chop off a big portion of, of the topic and mention it, but not really go into it. And I'm wondering if it would be a similar approach to most other topics. And with imaginative uh, empathy, you're thinking of chopping off a good piece of it and, um, and really simplifying it. And you're wondering if that's how we should approach other topics as well. I don't have an answer yet, but that's that's those are my thoughts. But again, just like Wendy said, I'm um, excited to see something coming to life and so much easier to edit than to create. And your those are your thoughts so far. And um, and like Wendy said, you're appreciating this uh, process and seeing something uh, coming into existence, and it's easier to edit than it is to uh, start from scratch. So. <laughs> Thank you. I feel fully heard. Oh, uh, uh, Wendy, you want to listen to me? I don't know who went. Who should I pick on? Who should I pick? Yeah, you can go to Wendy. Uh, I don't know uh, who's That's fine. I'm very happy. Um, yes. Um, well, I, I only caught a tiny bit of what Violetta said before about the difficulties with, you know, some of this presentation and it being a lot and. I basically agree with what everybody said in the big room, um, all of it, all the comments um, and your comments about self and about uh, inner self and outer self, uh, I'll pause. Um, so you're sharing that um, you didn't catch everything, um, but you um, agree with many of the comments about um, some of the difficulties um, and the points that were raised in the, in the bigger room and, and in this to do um, with inner and outer self and, and the, <clears throat> the fact that there was a lot of, of material. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I love the video presentation uh, called Death by PowerPoint. Uh, I, I've watched it many times, and every time I do a presentation, I watch it again. <laughs> You're very aware of 
<clears throat> the message, sorry, I seem to be losing my voice, very aware of the message in the death by PowerPoint um, little video. And um, each time you do a presentation um, to remind yourself of, avoid, of avoiding falling into the trap of death by point, point you watch that. Yeah, like, yeah. So, so I, I would recommend that as, a, as a prepare, preparing, you know, whatever you want to prepare, I recommend including death by PowerPoint yeah. as part of your, your like must have toolkit. <laughs> So your advice for anyone preparing any of these um, sessions uh, for this course on uh, defining our empathy, you suggest that we all, you know, watch that that death by PowerPoint video. Yeah, um, yeah. He says not more than six items per slide, like mm -hmm. six. That's it. <laughs> um, and they, yeah, I have difficulty with uh, just. Um, I kind of, um, I mean, DJ's criticism of it being um, not uh, or comment or whatever, uh, of it being not um, uh, inclusive, not uh, culturally aware. I mean, just focusing like tunnel onto Rogerian when so much research has been done on contemplative neuroscience and hundreds of papers on mindfulness and on awareness and so much on that. I, 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 <laughs> I, you know, this IFS is, mm, the Dalai Lama says psychology, Western psychology is in kindergarten compared to Tibetan Buddhism. So I, I uh, yeah, so I have difficulty there. Um, so you shared that um, <clears throat> one, of, one of the challenges for you, um, you reiterate what DJ was saying about perhaps the, the narrowness of the vision, the ethnocyte ethnocentricity and you're wondering um about how to um broaden out and include other um ways of, of looking at um self-empathy yeah and, yeah and not even just self-empathy but all of it actually um like reading material like maybe like i love uh, my time is up my time is up. Oh, We're yes. Yeah, but that's okay. Go ahead and finish your point. So like Tupten Jimpa has a beautiful, has beautiful excerpts, beautiful pages about empathy and research on empathy and empathy mentioning ethics and concern for others in, in his discussion of empathy. Like I would much prefer that as a reading than the lengthy kind of rambling Carl Rogers article as much as I respect and appreciate Carl Rogers. Um, yeah, so you're sharing that um, there are other readings that you're wondering if they could be included, uh, not just the Rogerian readings, but perhaps Tutan Jimpa's uh, work on empathy could be included as part of the reading. Yeah, I feel fully heard. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay, um, thank you. Um, Lou, would you be my listener, please? Yeah. Thank you. So one of the things um, I'm aware of that when we were all giving our definition of self-empathy was that there's always this use of feelings and emotions. Uh, I didn't hear it used. Yeah, so you're saying that you think empathy includes feelings and emotions and you weren't hearing that talked about a lot and yeah. you're concerned about that. Well, yeah. Um, again, it might come down to semantics or it might come down to, um, you know, inability in many of us to distinguish. But I, I do understand that in, in my understanding, feelings are things we already know about. They're pretty conscious and it's the emotions that are actually very pretty subconscious. And I think, yeah, that whole kind of shadow side of uh, that we can maybe explore if we're focusing on emotions as well as feeling. So it sounds like you're making a distinction between feelings and emotions and feelings are something you're aware of and emotions are something that you're not aware of that are more uh, subconscious, is that right? Uh, yes, that's, that's one of my understandings. So 
Yeah, I'm just, um, if we're defining self-empathy as, you know, sensing into um, our own feelings, well then what about sensing into our emotions and how, how deep can we go with that? with that process. Yeah, so you're wondering about the self-empathy process. Are people just feeling into the feelings that they're aware of as opposed to the emotions, the deeper emotions they're not aware of? And how, what about that? How do we, what do we, should that be addressed? Yeah, thank you. Um, and I do think the journaling exercise would be helpful in getting to, to that if, if it could be focused perhaps uh, a bit more. Uh, although five minutes, yeah, who knows, five minutes of journaling. Yeah, so you think journaling might be a way to get to the deeper emotions. You're not sure about that, but you think maybe that might be a pathway to it. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Um, this, I'm just aware we're probably going to run out of time. Yeah, break yeah. Out. So, so I feel fully heard. Lou, do you want to go for a <laughs> No, that's okay. You, uh, you only got one turn, I think. Yeah, that's okay. That's the way it happens. Um, yeah, I don't. It's okay. Uh, I, I'm sure anything have you haven't said yet. Um, yeah, I'm just, you know, fun to do this with all of you. Happy to do the breakout. Um, that's why I asked who to pick on because yeah, no, that's okay. No, it's like right. there wouldn't have been time anyway. So. All right. All right. <laughs> we'll see you back in the main room. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Notes.